Hello folks, hope you're having a good day, hope things are going well for you. Let's dive into some hobby nightmares, shall we? But first, if you can do, if you're getting any models over the next few weeks, make sure you head on over to Composite Games down below and use the promo code Northern Exile to get yourself 5% off your order at checkout. Not only are you getting new models, you're also helping out the channel and a really good small business selling models in the UK. So there you go. Let's jump into the hobby nightmares, shall we, with Buttery. Who says, Hello North, my name is Buttery, which is what you may call me. Okay. You've missed the boat there, man. You could have called yourself Butters and I had a really good link in there. I have quickly devoured a majority of your hobby nightmares and it is becoming my favourite thing to do. You have without doubt helped me with my mental headspace and focusing on my self-improvement journey. Good lad. Well done. A quick intro to me, which you may include if you wish, is I am 35 from the States. I have gone from 469 to, to 318 pounds, and I'm still focusing on it. Dude, that is a huge drop. That's like two or three stone, is it not, in the UK? I need to figure that one out. One stone in pounds. 14 pounds in one stone. Oh my god, dude. You've dropped like... A whole person's weight. <laughs> oh my god. Well done, man. That deserves a round of applause. Well done. Carry on. Fucking carry on, that man. Get on there. Absolutely. I've also gotten a great job now, and I'm making personal progress and mental health to become the Chad I want to be. Good. Excellent. Excellent, man. Well done to you. I am new to the hobby, and the details of how I got in will be a part of my first hobby nightmare. I am lurking on the Discord and proudly proudly support your work now on Patreon. Thank you very much. And if you want to do that as well, the Patreon is down below. If you want to support the channel and buy me a pint towards the weekend as we get into the summer, that's the place to do it. Anyway, now might be a good time to take a tea break if you want. No, I'm good. I'm good. I will do in a minute though. The Nightmare starts with a long-standing Dungeons & Dragons Discord campaign that I put together with local friends. I ran a fun game at the start that everybody enjoyed. I admit, I did not enjoy it as much, but it is a nightmare I will save for another time. After that game, we formed another group with my friend whom we will call Steve. Steve had run many games before this, and some of them were with me. His current world is based on a destroyed version of the Forgotten Realms, with a mix of a Magic the Gathering influence. I enjoyed it for a bit and had two characters I would play as, depending on which group would show up. At first, everything went well till he slowly would have us help him build the world for him. This might sound really cool, but it would still bite us in the ass over the next few years uh, and the, ga uh, the game would then span. He would take our concepts given to him and then change them up a lot to fit his game view. As a man with experience in running games, I understood it to be uh, to, to a bit, but he would never tell us much about the changes till the moment it happened. I am not sure if the other players got much warning, but I did not. Mind you, I tried to play, uh, I tried plenty of times, and I got fed up with it when one character got a bad deal. But take another sip of tea here, because this is where the hobby nightmare starts to kick into gear. Okay. This character in particular that I created started out. As a specific class, and I cannot recall what it, what it was now, but I was not enjoying it and wanted to change. Okay, well that's not too bad if you want to change. I mean, you know. Um, Steve immediately wanted to start back, wanted me to start back at level one when everybody else was level seven. I explained that wouldn't be fun at all, and asked if I could do it another way. It came to be that I would simply be without a class for eight sessions with this new compromise. It might have been sooner, but he decided to be uh, to do a tangent story that involved a weapon we had found that then proceeded to lead lead the true groups to, to PvP each other. I do not like player versus player combat, and he loved the drama it caused. It was annoying because he always seems to antagonise it, and luckily it was it was one it was a one-off situation. I then decided to take a break from that game, telling him scheduling was an issue, which it was in all honesty. Well, to be fair, you know, your gaming styles are just different, and you've gone your own way, that's fine. Starting you off at level zero, just because you wanted to change your character's class, is a bit of a... 
bit of a dick move, you know? It's a friendly game. Everyone's just chilling out. There's no need to... I don't know, man. I don't know. Seems like somebody's taking it far too seriously. Um, take another break if you want while we fast forward towards recently. I have known Steve for a lot of my life. And he would provide me the cold shoulder uh, till I asked to come back with a new character in mind. This was because the other players wanted me back and enjoyed me playing and I enjoyed theirs. I also wanted to give him another chance. This new character was supposed to be a reincarnation of an original character from his original world. This was supposed to be revealed when we got to the end of the game. This was because the original character had a perpetual or time lord type of regeneration where he would always come back. I used this to always be able to bring him into new settings and never honestly use it, used it as a way to just make him immortal from, from a gameplay standpoint. Whenever he died, he lost pretty much everything apart from a few scant memories. So it was like he died for real, even if technically he didn't. That's a good way of getting around it. Because technically you are dead to the people who, who loved you, right? You go to another world now. That would suck. If he was ever killed in a particular setting, I would just add it to his ever-growing list of backstories. I made the, I mainly did this so if anybody ever is in-game and I, ru I, I run and meet this self-insert character, they would be able to reference other places and such if need be. It's more of an easter egg if anything else, and I hate using it for other purposes in games, but I'm sure it's not the best. He allowed it, but would quickly reveal who I was on his own five or six sessions into the campaign. This was devastating because the rest of the players were slowly forming theories about whom I was, playing on their own, and they were enjoying it. I was aggravated but kept playing with them because I enjoyed the group but not the GM. Fast forward a bit as he kept doing similar things, which consisted of forcing political things into his world, and overall making it a lot less fun. This seems like the kind of guy who can't stand anybody else having anything cool. Do you know what I mean? He needs to be the centre of attention. He needs to be the one who is doing stuff all the time. Do you know what I mean? An example is I made another character to play with a second group who was opposed to be introduced as a hard-ass commander of a mercenary troop. The first session I wanted to kill, uh, to kill one of them for retreating commissar style. He immediately said it was too harsh and that another NPC I wanted to create was offensive because I wanted to purpose purposefully name them to dead name them. What? It was a female who, who preferred to use her more masculine surname and I wanted to always refer to her as her feminine first name. Okay. He said it would, it would offend the other members who were trans in the group. I just, I just accepted fate and I could not make any interesting choices. Okay, well, one interesting choice here, man. I want to come down on your GM side for one bit here. You wanting to kill another PC, another player character at the table for retreating because because it suits your play style. That's a dickhead move. All right, that's a dickhead move. You know, <clears throat> for something so flimsy as falling back from combat, and you're like, no, I'm going to kill him. Really, really? That's a dickhead move. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be the enemy of fun, alright? The other person might really be enjoying their character. What happened to you earlier from this GM, it seems that you've learned from him, and now you're, you're trying to do it to other people. Stop. Don't do that, alright? Don't do that. Don't go after other people's characters. It's not fun. For all you know, they're really enjoying their character, and they're doing something that is completely fine in, in their own mind, and you're killing them for it, right? There are other things to do. There, there are different levels, of course. You know, if your other player is going around murder, murder hoboing and, and generally being annoying and it goes against your character's every fiber of their being, then fine, yeah. Retreating once from combat, even if you are a commissar style guy, don't go 40k and start killing people in games, man. Especially if it's not that kind of setting, okay? Um, the best thing you could have done there is take their character aside after, after battle and say, look, I am going to tutor you to not do that again because it's very dishonorable. Blah, blah, blah. That's the way you do it, right? You don't just kill them. Uh, the rest of it, yeah. I mean, you do your character how you want to do it. If you're if you're doing a trans character with a female name, that's up to you, man. That's up to you. I can I can. Un if other players then say, "Man, that's a bit," you know, I, I'm trans myself and I don't like that. Do you mind not doing that? Then what you should do 
is be is be acquiescing to their feelings and change your character. Sorry, everyone's gonna have a go at me for that, but no, I'm I'm being serious. All right, just because I intend to think, um, um. You know, a lot of ideologies like that tend to be very warped and tend to, like, you know, a lot of people in there are, are in there for the wrong reasons. Trans people are fucking real, dude. They exist. So you don't know who you're at the table with. If somebody else at your table is actually trans and in the, in the process of transitioning and you're creating a, a trans character who insists on being called their, their dead name, their, you know, their, their original name, that's really disrespectful and you shouldn't do it. And if they ask you not to do it, you shouldn't. Alright? It's kind of like you going in and playing a a character from Sub-Saharan Africa. Who's like a really big racial stereotype. You know? And a black person at your table goes, please man, don't do that. Yeah, don't do it. I'd be the same with, um, you know. Uh, I don't know. What, what would affect me? With, with Jewish people. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be the same. If somebody came into my to my setting or my my Dungeons and Dragons game and they created a really offensive Jewish character, I'd be like, "Mate, do you mind not doing that? Can you not do that, please?" And I'd be completely within my rights to do it. And if they refused to change, I'd get my book and I'd walk away. Well, I'm not playing with these motherfuckers, right? See you later. Okay. So yeah, you're being a bit of a douche. <laughs> is what I'm saying. I get what you're doing. I get that you know it's not a big thing to you, but you're being a douche. All right. It's not. It's not a big thing to just be courteous to people. We've had many hobby nightmares when people are being very overly sensitive, right? Literally doing something offensive though at the table, and then just then just saying, "What? Well, I can't do anything interesting." Um, come on, mate! Don't be such a fucking juvenile. Just you know, get with the program. You don't know who other people are. Always be kind. Always be kind. Always. Okay. Yes. You know, a lot of people who, who identify as trans, really, it's it's masking something else. You know, I, I deal with kids like this all the time, who say that they're, they're, they're trans when, when they're not, right? They, 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 these are just confused children, um, who can't really say what they are, you know? My eight-year-old thinks she's a truck most of the time, and she drives herself around the back garden. But she's not actually a truck, is she? Do you know what I mean? Like, they just... Kids can't make those decisions. But, like... And again, I think it masks a lot of trauma and therapy is needed. But saying that, there are an incredible amount of real trans people out there. And a lot of them are into the same hobbies that we are into, right? Again, the internet and the world are so polarizing these days that you can't have two exact same different thoughts about the same issue, which I do. I do. I think a lot of, a lot of trans people, that issue can be solved with therapy, right? And this, but this morphia will go away. But I also believe there are a lot of trans people out there who are actually trans. It's a very, very, very grey issue. Very grey, right? And that's why you should be very careful when you're dealing with things like this, because you don't know if somebody at your table is actually really trans and they're actually transitioning and they're actually becoming an, another sex entirely and they were born in the wrong body. You don't know that. So be very careful. As a thing, if, if there's a culture or something at your, or a sexuality at your table that you are not, generally, my advice is to stay away from it and not play that character. That's my advice, you right? It just is. I, I wouldn't play a gay character or a black character because I've not lived those experiences, you know? I've not lived those experiences, so I've not been... I, I've got nothing to draw on. And as far as I'm aware, I might be doing something that is completely non-character for those people. So I'm not even doing a good job of having those character things, right? Now, if, if you've got a friend who can talk you through those things and how it feels, and you take it seriously, then maybe you can play a character who is trans, or who is gay, or who, or who is not the same race as you, or same religion as you. But you need to have a grounding in real life of what those people go through and what they think on a daily basis. If you don't have that, don't play those characters. It's fucking offensive. Okay? I'm being serious. I draw the line there. And you know me. I can be I you know I've been called based in the past. Alright, fine, fair enough. I don't know I've I hardly know what that means, but if you know, even me, who has these opinions, there are there are some people consider conservatives, some people consider them middle of the line, I don't know. 
But even me, I'm saying, look, if, if it's not, if that's not you, if you've got no idea what these people go through, don't play them in an RPG. It's disrespectful. Just don't do it. Don't open that kind of worms. You're creating a headache for yourself. Why would you do it? Right? Anyway. Um, I'm just going to take a quick sip of tea here. Alright. Skipping forward to the last game we played with this guy, we ended up going into a deep cave system to find a relic from the past. When doing so, we tracked him down to a spider den in which he proceeded to throw an impossible fight at us. We asked if he meant for us to be captured, and he said nothing. We tried to, to run for, for us only to be flanked by another impossible fight. We read the room after, he flaunted that a fight would be impossible, and we all felt the agency in this story was gone. We wanted to fight because the other option was to give up personal belongings that we valued more than our lives. We all accepted capture, fed up and due to it already... already um, um, due, due, to, due to it, it, it had already showed in our personal attitudes that we were kind of done. The next two weeks, we would make excuses not to play, until one of the players simply told him we did not want to play and that a break was in order. This is something I agree, agreed with, because I had already told him for months I had wanted to run something myself. He didn't take this very well, and proceeded to handle this, this in a fashion of deflecting, and he left the server and unfriended everybody but me. This man I have spent a long time playing cards with and supporting him when he had a lot of issues going on just blew it up in my face when we said we wanted to take a break, and it kind of hurt me. Luckily, I had recently decided to dive into 40k, and I'd been picking up Grey Knights and, and Slaves to Darkness as quickly after. I had dreaded of the thought of playing the game because I hated building and painting, but I quickly learned to love both. When you say it is a very medita when you say it is very meditative, you are not wrong, and I have been a busy bee in it. I have included my first set of completed models and would love for you to show them. I am frustrated with the man who is slowly trying to talk me to want to I am frustrated with this man who is slowly trying to talk to me once more, but I think you would say that the sea should simply have him. Um I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Buttery, mate. I, I, I don't know, mate. I, I, I think this is. These are two friends. You are two friends, who have come to a disagreement, right? Um. But I honestly don't. Walking away from friendships for one simple, shall we say, argument between each other, is. Really something I'd like to discourage, you know? By the way, you didn't send me any pictures. I haven't seen any pictures here. Um, so, send me it again and I'll put them on next time, alright? Uh, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't walk away from this friendship, dude. I, I think there's something there, you know? I, I think this has been a big a miscommunication. Maybe he's just not a very good GM. But not being a very good GM is not a reason to like, not be friends with somebody, alright? Most of my friends aren't very good GMs, but... You know, it is what it is. Being a GM or, or a dungeon master is very, very, very uh, specialist in the skills that you need to be good at it. To be really good at it, you know? That's why there are so many players compared to DMs. There just are. So be very, very careful about walking away from friendships because of something that's happened at a table in a D&D &D game. I have friends who are very different to me politically, you know? I have friends who are very much on the left or who are very much on the right and as long as they don't like like get on their soapbox with me and wag their fingers at me and and you know tell me i'm bad for not thinking that their ideology is the be all end all we can get along just fine you know just be very careful about throwing people in the sea the sea isn't for everybody the sea is for the worst all right this guy doesn't seem like the worst to me maybe reach out he's trying to reach out to you maybe Accept the olive branch, dude, and say, look, yeah, all right, let's be friends. Water under the bridge. Give him another chance. And if things kick off again, then you know where to go. Say, right, I'm done. See you later, you know? But at least you gave it a, sh I gave it a shot. Okay. Um, Rupert says, hi, North, you absolute legend. Thank you very much, man. I'll stay anonymous for this one, but you can call me Ru Rupert because I am one. I, but, dude... You can't do that. 
You can't do that with your hobby nightmares. Sorry. Okay. Um, you led with with Rupert. That's where we are. <laughs> That's where we are. Um, a lot of these get read out on the channel, so you can't. You start in big capital letters. I've said it at the start. Big capital letters right at the start. You know. You need your name there, okay? Um, I've just reread the start of your email, and Rupert is not your name. Good. It sounded like it was there, and that you were saying. Uh, please call me Rupert. Don't, or please call me Rupert, but I want to be anonymous. It's like, you can't say shit like that to me because it's going to be confusing. Okay, Rupert's fine. Moving on. I love your channel and find it to be a fantastic insight into this weird and wonderful hobby. The algorithm recently served you up to me when I was painting my new 40k army. Again, I'll keep them anon. But I'll just say that I'm a man of culture on the fanatical of the fanatical variety. Mmm... Black Templars or Grey Knights? I'm going with Black Templars. Having hit my mid-30s and no longer able to, come to, con to contain my inner nerd, I recently got back into the hobby. I am having an absolute blast. Bizarrely, this was brought on after discovering a secret sect of my work colleagues that are all deeply closeted 40k players. That's cool! That's awesome! Australia, oh, I'm getting a, an image of you going into work going, Guys, I've got something to tell you. Oh my god. I'm collecting toy soldiers. And they go, oh, shh. And he opens his coat and there's like loads of salamanders in there. <laughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Oh my god. <laughs> a strangely large proportion of people at that. This was shocking to me. Many of these guys are macho men who play rugby and go out hunting wild game in their spare time. They would never admit to playing 40k during work or in the wider public. Hilarious. One of them even regularly features on a popular YouTube channel and frankly, I am not sure how he manages to keep this quiet. Dude, so many chads do 40k. It is a chad thing to do. It is a manly thing to do. You know, having the discipline to collect, having the, the disposable income and the discipline to collect models and stick to a painting schedule and play the game and learn it, that's Chad behavior. People don't realize it is for an adult to do. All right. It's why the cavils of this world do it. So many ultra successful men do 40K. It just so happens also that many unsuccessful men also do 40k but don't be surprised about the amount of uh, rugby playing you know chick magnets who are into 40k there's loads of them absolutely loads of them you go you go into any grouping of, of good looking successful men a good majority of them either either really want to do 40k but they're kind of talked out of it by their friends or they're already doing it I'm telling you now I'm telling you now sizable portion um, <clears throat> the subject of my nightmare is actually a good friend of mine. We'll call him Dave. <laughs> Poor Dave. Dave actually got me back into the hobby after a 24-year hiatus and is truly a lovable bloke. He explained and continues to explain all the rules to me, gives me painting tips, and has even given me a, a load of his old spare parts and models. pre 9th edition, but great for kit bashing. Good lad, good lad. Dave also hosts all of our games at his house, as I don't have all the relevant scenery, dice, rule books, etc. During our games, he's been giving me tips on how to use my models, and he, rem he reminds me to check my abilities all the time, or reasonably often, and even lets me go back occasionally and use the odd ability that I forget about and generally exhibits other really sportsmanlike behaviour. I feel like I owe him a lot, which makes me suspect that I might be an asshole in uh, in the fact that I'm about in the the ditty I'm about to spin. However, on with the nightmare. Okay, okay. Hopefully, this isn't friendship betrayal we're witnessing here. We'll see. After our initial couple of games, we played we played around eight now. Dave took it really easy on me and explained all the rules and the use of the stratagems. I even won one of these games. However, since then things seem to have been have taken an annoying turn. Now, each time we play, he puts together the deadliest combination of his units he can think of, paired with the most effective detachment rules and stratagems. 
At this point, I think it is important to note that Dave has been collecting his custom army of the galaxy's bestest boys for about six years now. He, is ev he has every single fecking unit, character and tank that exists, and all the new 10th new edition stuff. They are all immaculately painted in his custom paint scheme, and he is rightfully intensely proud of his army. Unfortunately, using the aforementioned deadly detachments always results in my, in my trash army being horribly defeated, and usually tabled, as it, as it mostly consists of starter box set models and a few extra models and units that I have managed to scrape together. This is distinctly unfun for me. A point I have made abundantly clear through my intense whining and whinging and complaining, roughly around the point in the match where I realised I had no actual chance of winning anyway. It's usually about round two or three. Oh yeah, and that thing I said was super nice that he does, setting up the table and hosting each week, well this has turned into a nightmare in and of itself, as each time we play a game he seems to pick the exact game and scenery that suits his detachment of the day. One week for example, he set up the board with all the scenery at one end and explained to me that this was a defensive game where the attacker had to take the objectives from the defender at the back of the map and hold them for long enough to score enough points to win. He then stated that he wanted to be the defender, to which I seemed quite to which I suggested it seemed quite unfair, and so he begrudgingly agreed that we could roll for it. Inevitably, I lost this roll. I lose all rolls at the start of <laughs> At the start screen of life, I must have put all of my points into something other than luck. Not sure what, because I am not that bright, dexterous or strong either. Thus, I was to be the attacker, as he had hoped slash planned. To maintain anonymity, I won't disclose his army composition. Needless to say, it had ridiculous range. The heavy keyword for most of his units, and seemingly a million shots per turn with lethals and mortals to boot. It was about the end of turn 2 slash so start of turn 3 when I realised I would never have been able to win this game. In fact, probably the most competitive army list for a tournament wouldn't have been able to win this game. This was made worse by the revelation near the end of the game that he had been scoring the objectives wrong the, the whole time, giving himself way more points than he should have for each of the objectives. And we had to, re to recalculate, thinking through what had just happened over the past 3 hours, not that I really wanted to relive that experience. <laughs> Needless to say, he won anyway. But what felt even more unfair was that his, this scoring gaff had actually impacted what I had chosen to do, making it seem like the only thing I could, I could try to do was attack his rear objectives full on. Exactly what he wanted. A shooting gallery. Yeah, super fun. Sad face. The conclusion of this seemingly heavily stacked game inevitably resulted in us lapsing into the same conversation we seem to have every week, though it feels more like an argument at this point. Also, this is where I want to know if I am just being a whiny little bitch. His words or not. I explained that it isn't that, that it isn't fun for me if the game is a foregone conclusion that I am always going to lose. This is the sixth week in a row of overpowered bullshit, despite him claiming he would come with a less powerful army. I ask time and again, how can it be fun for him if it's not a challenge? Does this not feel like a new like noob bashing to him? I've also suggested a few times why he doesn't just assemble an army that is equal to mine to make it fairer, to which he always exclaims, but it is fair, that's what the points are for. This is clearly nonsense, and we all know it is. He demonstrates this by the way he assembles his detachments. Sorry, one second. Need a sip of tea there. It feels a bit weird that he would say something so ridiculous. Now, it could just be me, but for somebody that seems to be doing everything they can to win against the total noob, he comes out with many odd responses, such as, and these are direct quotes. Right, I'm going to take a sip of tea before I say these. And I quote, You just need to get comfortable with losing. It's not about winning. You just need to learn to have fun playing the game. I spent years and loads of money to have the ability to make any army combination I want. If you can't do that, that's not my problem. It's not my responsibility to remind you of your abilities and stratagems. I play my other friend and I never win because he collects Eldar and they are totally broken, blah 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 blah. 
Okay, some of these I get what, he, what he's saying. It, it isn't his responsibility to, to remind you of your abilities and stratagems. That is true. Um, that's the only one I'm going to go and agree with him on, right? All of the things he's talking about are just him doing get good, son, you know? And it's one of those attitudes that I fucking can't stand in 40k. These people who come into nice, normal, friendly games with their friends and try to literally dick them off the table at the, at the top of the game. And then they go, well, the game lets me do that. It's the game, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, well, what am I supposed to do? Try not to win? No! You're supposed to have fun with your friend. Do you know what I mean? You're supposed to play a fair game of 40k with your friend. Just because the Games Workshop can't write rules properly. So just because they've written rules that say you can be a dickhead, doesn't mean you should be a dickhead to your friends every single time. Tell him that. Just because the rules say you can be a dickhead, my friend, doesn't mean to say that you should be a dickhead to your friends when you're playing them. And stop playing him. Dude, there are so many people to play in this hobby. Go somewhere else. Go to a local store. Go to a club. Alright? Find your people. This is somebody who is failing. Mate, Rupert, you are failing in the rule one of how to do this hobby properly. Choose your opponent. Alright? What you're resembling to me is somebody who has spent too much time at home with their parents. Now, I don't mean that you're immature. Let me, let me get to that in a minute. One sec. What I mean is, your friend here is your hobby parent. He got you into the hobby, and you've been there for so long, things have gotten toxic. At some point, a child needs to spread their wings and move out and go and find their own people to be a lot more happy. And that happened to me in my own life. Me and my mother are very similar, and we know how to press each other's buttons. And we fucking hated each other for a long time. We lived in the same house, you know... We, we snapped at each other all the time, and it really was, wasn't was a, it was a toxic place to be. When I moved out, and she started to miss me, and I started to miss home comforts, that's when we realised how much we actually have in common, and we are now have a really, really, really strong and good relationship. We still piss each other off all the time, don't get me wrong, but we have an amazing relationship now, because we were able to get that space, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I moved out, I spread my wings, I found my own people. I became friends with, with a lot more other people and we were we were fine, right? You need to do the same. You need to spread your wings and go and find your own people. Seriously. Go and find your own guys and have fun. Alright, carrying on. One sec, carrying on. Now... I am not saying some of these comments are untrue or unfair, good for you. But as a real newbie who just wants to learn and have fun, I feel like this is a bit of a ridiculous stance to take. Uh, yeah, because it is. Quite frankly, it is. In fact, fuck it, strap in. Drink some Yorkshire tea, you're going to need it. I'm entering mega rant mode. He always has some BS stratagem or rule, or an ability that makes my army useless, or interrupts what I'm doing in my turn, or gives his army some ridiculous thing, where all his units get 50 shots, all hitting on twos, wounding on twos, and have lethals, and mortals, and god knows what else. This is all in the codex, by the way. He shows it to me every single time. And you can be damn sure he will, as he squeals with delight, pushes metaphorical nerd glasses up his nose, See, my detachment has this stratagem where I can warp everything away for one command point so you can't shoot in your turn, blah, 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 blah. I just feel like, what's the fucking point, you know? After a significant, after a significant effort of persistent whining and complaining and stating that if this is how we are going to play, I wouldn't bother anymore, I finally got him to concede and agree to put together a fairer army list. Did he? Fuck no. Now instead of broken 10-man units with, char with character combinations, he just starts bringing his overpowered tanks and different 10-man squads, and I continue to lose. So what am I to do? I apply weaponized autism. I, started, <laughs> I start turning up with super powerful units of my own as a surprise, getting them purchased and painted in a weekend. The first time I did this, I could see the visible shock and panic on his face as I revealed my super powerful tank 
and or unit or character or Death Star. He didn't plan for this, and so his army is not perfectly attuned to defeating this unit. Ho ho ho, now I have a machine gun type of stuff. The first time I did this, admittedly, I lost. But my new unit destroyed a third of his army. This was super fun for me. The look on his face during the reveal and use of the unit was priceless. I would like to state that this is not normal for me, but I just wanted to have fun. But I, uh, but I have been turned into the same sort of super competitive douchebag as this guy. I was now doing better though, getting closer to that sweet, sweet victory. However, these actions would not go unpunished. For all subsequent games, the helpful advice stopped. The being able to go back to do something I, f I forgot, that is no longer allowed. Reminding me about an ability, not a fucking chance. Every time he moves a unit, it's able to just see my units. Weapons always just in, in a millimeter of, it, of his range. Relentless, relentlessly double checking any of, my movement, any of my movements and ranges. But if I dare ask to check his movement and distances, I am chastised as being a rules lawyer. Well, I got him good in our last match. Another day, another stacked game. He brings his most powerful tanks. He relentlessly kills any of my units, not cowering inside of ruins. Despite this, the game is surprisingly close for once, as I get some lucky kills, using my trash army to good effect. Sounds like you're becoming a better player, dude, to be honest with you. Um, th th these, are, these are the fires of war, my friend. They are making you a better player. Then comes my coup de grace. The last round of the game, his turn, we know he's already won by five points, but he is getting ready to remove the last of my units from the table, with such glee on his face. He hurries me to roll my save during his shooting phase as I quietly read my stratagems. Come on, dude, what's taking you so long? He says. My chapter master is still in the fight. Dave declares his charges, and I ask... So, you are definitely charging those flamers first then. Him. Yeah, it's a one inch charge, they're definitely in. Good? Good. I mutter. As he goes to roll his charge into my chapter master and the remains of his bodyguard, I proclaim, Heroic intervention. Ah, he interjects. You can't do that. Those units haven't fought. You can only do that in the fight phase. Wrong again, asshole. I show him the first stratagem that clearly states... When your opponent's charge phase, just after an enemy unit, ends a charge move. He's shocked. He turns the evil Sunset Scarlet red. But you made me do that, he exclaimed. I don't want to do that. I tell him, too bad, pal, as I nail my roll for the charge into his, into his last elite units. My chapter ma master cuts them all down and he's effectively tabled. He is visibly upset as I exclaim, Good, good. Let the anger flow through you. How the turntables have to... <laughs> Office reference, love it. Ah, how the turntables. He had the look of a man that thought he was about to get laid, only for some absolute chad to sweep in and steal the girl from right under him at the last second. On reflection, I don't want to know if I am an asshole. Please provide... <laughs> advice on how to mercilessly kick this guy's ass in future games. Do I have to buy more pre-made pre Eldar army from eBay or what? Many thanks. Lo love you long time. Hugs and kisses, Rupert. Okay, um, I would advise you to not do any of that. Uh, I would advise you to enjoy your fucking hobby, dude. Um, what you're doing now is a toxic circle of nonsense that's only going to bring more stress into your life and the hobby shouldn't be stressful. So I would uh, back away from this guy and say, look, I've got me one win, mate. That's all I wanted. And, you know, I'm going to leave now. And I'm going to play with the people because games with you just aren't that fun. You know, because some people need a slap in the face like that. You know, and then go to, a, go to a hobby store or something and have fun. Go to a newbie night or something and have fun. That's what I would do. Go find your people. Get out there. Play with the people. Don't get involved or engage with this toxic cir circular behavior. It's only going to lead to you getting more and more frustrated. And the hobby shouldn't be bringing stress into your life. Alright? That's my advice. Alright, cool. Moving on. You know, the minute you're, you're, you're buying armies just, just to dick on your friend, quote-unquote. Yeah, that's not what the hobby's about, dude. Alright? Just... You're, you're, 
I'll tell you this, Rupert. You're not doing the hobby. There you go. You're not doing the hobby. Okay? You're doing it wrong. You're, you're, you're literally doing the hobby wrong. Me and you were not in the same hobby. You're in the hobby of dicking on your friend. Because that's the, that's the learned behaviour you've gotten from him. But he's also not doing the hobby. He happens to be playing with similar models that, that 40k plays with. You know what I mean? But you're being dickheads to each other. That's not the hobby. Me and you, we're not the same. Alright? So me giving you advice now to beat this guy, I'm, I'm never going to do it. I don't care enough to. I want to have fun. I'm here to have fun and blow shit up and have fun with my friends. If you're not here for that, congratulations. You're not a 40k hobbyist. So I would I would very much rethink your attitude. Um, you are the victim here. Don't get me wrong. You totally are the victim. But before this goes any further, rethink what you're doing. All right? Go and find your own people. If you want to be here with us and have fun in the hobby, then come over and have some fun. But don't... Do not get involved in toxicity like this. Only leads to more misery and stress. All right? Cool. Moving on. Arturia says... Hey, North. I have a quandary I think you can help me with. Okay. Alrighty. 40k is a huge part of my life. Ah, I remember this email. So my video yesterday on should you feel shame in the hobby was prompted by this email. So this goes to show some of your hobby nightmares sometimes directly push me to do certain videos. So he says, Hi North. Oh, hey North. I have a quandary I think you can help me with. 40k is a huge part of my life. I mean, I use it to de-stress and to take time to wrap my head around problems at work. In all honesty, I've had issues with workload or something that needs sorting out really quickly. And if I have, I switch off my brain, paint some models, and the answer is there, coming to me clear as day. Even when it doesn't happen quite like this, it still really helps me. I make sure to get out and about with my friends, and they get time with me. I have a lot of fun away from the hobby too. The issue is, I'm single and living in London. My job is fantastic, and I'm known as a bit of a problem solver there. It's essentially my job, and I would be there all day if they let me. I love it so much. I guess you could consider me good looking? Question mark. I've been told I look a lot like Ryan Gosling, which I've been told is not a bad thing. I have a picture attached, but please don't show it on a video okay and I I, I, yeah, I looked at this you're you're a lucky motherfucker i will say that right now um you know you're you're this you're that good looking that i took a, a look a look at that picture and i went yeah i'm so good looking look at me sending you're gonna have a nightmare to people yeah. you know that, that i literally had that had that thought in my head you know um anyway <laughs> Uh, I've been told I look a little bit like Ryan Gosling, which I have been told is not a bad thing. But I'm a fucking nerd on the inside, dude. I lounge around wearing boxers and a smelly t-shirt, watching yourself and Voldemort whilst I furiously paint my miniatures when I'm at home. It's a peaceful life. The thing is, in this city, especially the professional parts, the hobby is looked down upon. Whenever I've spoken to my friends about it, they look as if I have slapped them in the face, and things go kind of quiet. They are lovely people, don't get me wrong, uh, most of the time, but no one in my circle gets it at all in terms of the hobby. I felt so seen when Henry Cavill was just talking passionately about the hobby, but recently it's just a ball egg to the point that my painting has been on the back burner. I feel a real guilt when doing my hobby and I could be out when I could be out with my friends. There is a real pressure to just not do it, as I am being irresponsible with my time. My good friend Mark from work actually said that to me. Doing Warhammer is a waste of time when I could be networking or watching the match with the lads. I mean, I like doing these things too, but I also like my Black Templars. What the fuck do I do here? How do I reconcile the two? Thanks for all you do, mate. Arturia. So, I think the, the video yesterday answers a lot of your questions, because I felt that it deserved its own video. Um, but in terms of your friends, look, okay, th they just want what's best for you. So don't, don't sod these friends off. Don't walk away from your friends, okay? But be honest with them. 
be honest with them. Say so when they ridicule it, say, listen guys, you know, Warhammer's a huge part of my life and I love it and it really does de-stress me. And I get a lot of good out of it, you know. I work through a lot of mental problems that I'm thinking through by painting models, get something to focus on. And for before I know it, I've solved all the issues that I need to solve. I love it. It's part of my life. Can you please not ridicule it as, as you do? Because it just gets to me sometimes. Because I really do. I value your opinions. But I know you're wrong on this. But everything else in life, I value your opinions. And so it really gets to me when you talk shit about my hobby. It's not nice, you know? That's all you need to say. If they're good people, I'll go, Oh, sorry, mate. I didn't realise that you was it was affected you like that. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. No problem. If they say, oh, fucking hell, you know, if they do that, then yeah, then fuck them off, okay? Because then they are being dickheads. But give them a, a proper chance and be honest with them. Say, look, it's bothering me. This is bothering me that you do this, you know? And I know I could go out and get a girl. I could go out and get this, get that. It's fine. I'm going to do things on my own time. I'm having fun. I've got a really good job in the city. And, dude, you're killing it in life, all right? You're killing it. The only thing you haven't got is a woman. And who says you want one? You, you look like you're in your mid-twenties. You're working in the, in the city of London. Not the wider city. The city of London. If any, any of you know what that means, you know what I mean. That is very, very, very wealthy. You're in a very wealthy place. You're killing it in life. So accept the fact that you're killing it in life. And accept the fact that you're allowed to do your hobby. And if your friends can't get behind that, then maybe they're not your friends. But don't just sack them off. Give them the chance. And I swear to you, good people who should be in your life will get what you mean and will back straight off. All right? It looks like you've got a really healthy work-life ba balance. And it looks like you're fitting into what I said in the video yesterday. You know what I mean? I, I, I kind of maybe used you as, as a model for that video of this is what a healthy hobbyist looks like in my mind. If I'm doing that in a video of my own, then you know you shouldn't be feeling shame or guilt for doing your hobby. So get that out of your fucking brain straight away. Go to your friends and honestly talk to them about this. Okay? And if they can't get with it, then back away from them. Later on, back away from them. Put them on a timeout for a bit. You know? And accentuate the good relationships that you have. All the friends that respond positively and say, sorry about that, mate, didn't realise. And, and all of them will. I'm telling you now, if they're good people, all of them will. Let's be honest. If they do that, mate, build those relationships. They're really important, all right? That's what I would do in your situation. Anyway, I love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for a... Uh, I think we're doing a... a oh, 40k custom chapters tomorrow. That's going to be awesome. Can't wait for that. That's going to be so, 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 so fun. I love you a long time. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye now.